Welcome back to PlayStation Access and to our top 10 videos designed to give you an easy way into the very best of PlayStation 4's huge lineup of games. This week we're looking at the best action games on PlayStation 4, shining a light on the daring adventures, dazzling combat and high stakes heroics behind our favourite blockbusters. In no particular order, let's get started with Batman Arkham Knight, because even now, almost five years later, it's hard to find a game that looks as good as Rocksteady's closing chapter of the Arkham Trilogy, an extraordinary mix of technical muscle and creative flair that gives us a deep, textured Gotham of shadow and light. Knight is a suitable climax to a brilliant series. Arkham Asylum and Arkham City, which are available and recommended as remastered on PS4, delivered lore-rich Metroidvania experiences and deep, sophisticated and distinctively Batman combat. Arkham Knight transports this core gameplay into a genuinely open-world Gotham, adding an equally considered Batmobile, improved grappling and gliding, more gadgets and a gripping story that, even in the absence of the dearly departed Joker, showcases the extraordinary talents of Mark Hamill. Arkham Knight is a huge, sumptuous send-off and still one of the finest action games there is. If you're lying, I'll break the other one. The other one? Ah! Next up, Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, or what happens when From Software shift away from the complexities of RPG character building and focus on making the slickest, most challenging combat system they can. The result is a wonderfully layered fighting experience built around posture, deflections and pure timing. One that's just as rewarding as the gradual grind of Dark Souls, but relies on upping your skills as much as your level. Sekiro is set in Japan's Sengoku period rather than Dark Souls' medieval European-style world, but offers the same satisfying progression, gradually unlocking an interlinked, semi-open environment full of shortcuts and secrets. And you'll get the same rush when you finally overcome bosses and brutal difficulty spikes too, though that final victory here comes with the added rush of having focused and mastered techniques that seemed impossible when you started the game. Dishonored 2 is unlike any of the other entries on this list. It's an action title for sure, but also an immersive sim, the name for a particular style of game emphasising deep systems and player choice. Here that means an incredibly rich narrative set in a superbly textured world, and a series of powers that combine with flexible mission design to offer multiple solutions to any given problem. It's a nerdy sandbox of puzzles, lateral thinking, and if you fancy it, crazed action. The game can accommodate absolute stealth, with players consuming each level and intricacy piece by piece, avoiding detection throughout, and frenzied super-powered violence, as well as everything in between. It is, along with its predecessor, again available on PS4 as a remaster and totally worth your time, a sophisticated, hugely satisfying, and however you approach it, brilliantly playable triumph. How many times have I looked at that skyline? It feels like everything just changed. Next, we have 2018's God of War, an epic jump start for what might be PlayStation's defining action series. Back on PS2, the original God of War proved that Western developers could compete with their more established Japanese peers when it came to slick split-second combat. In 2018, the new God of War proved that an evolved form of the same combat could be the foundation for a reinvention of the series, which introduced a depth of character, story and world building that made God of War a blockbuster worthy of standing alongside contemporaries like Uncharted and Horizon Zero Dawn. This is no mean thing, to take the old Kratos, basically murder itself with a goatee, and to transform him into a character worth following and caring for, while still delivering on the action that the God of War name stands for. Boy. As a playground for stalking orcs and taking on Sauron's armies with some unusually slick Batman-style combat, both Shadow of Mordor and its ambitious follow-up Shadow of War are huge, time-swallowing fun. In fact, there are two things that push the Shadow games into our top 10. The first is the Nemesis system, through which you can interact with Mordor's ranks of orc captains, conscripting them or getting revenge on them for your previous deaths. It's a brilliant game within a game. 
and the second is the fact the design and personalities of the Yorks are taken quite directly from Peter Jackson's film adaptations of Lord of the Rings, and the game captures them brilliantly, all sneering cockney crooks and working class heavies. In Shadow of War these things combine in huge siege set pieces where you invade fortresses with your conscripted armies, complex, customised and climactic action sequences that feature actual dragons. The world of men is ending. Devil May Cry 5 is up next, a sequel that is for our money the purest expression of the series' stylish action philosophy that Capcom has ever produced. You've got three characters to master. First up there's Nero with his sweeping sword attacks, thumping double-barreled revolver and detachable exploding robot arms. Then you've got Dante, the solid snake of the Devil May Cry universe, a versatile showman who's just as comfortable juggling demons with graceful swordplay as he is punching their faces off with a set of fiery gauntlets. And finally there's V, a mysterious newcomer who summons a trio of demons to do the fighting for him. Shifting between these characters is a bit like changing the lens on a camera. You're still controlling the same machine, all that differs is the way in which that machine frames the action. V is the wide angle, offering you a panoramic view of the action, almost as if you're directing a ballet from high in the gallery, which makes Dante and Nero the leading actors, the stars of a combat system where style is substance, and one that encourages you to play again and again until you've achieved that elusive S rank, awarded for fighting as beautifully as possible. Throw in a satisfying story sure to please long-time fans, and you've got arguably the best Devil May Cry yet. Devil May Cry. Dante! Dante! Do you have any idea how many times I've tried to call? Like a zillion! <laughs> oh my god, tonight's my birthday party! Yeah, I'm turning 18! <laughs> Not a little kid! And completing our lineup of top tier hack and slashers is Neo 2, although between us feel totally free to include the first Neo as well. Neo 2 stands alongside Sekiro, God of War and DMC5 as a must play for deep combat enthusiasts. Like Sekiro, Neo describes itself as a massacre title, a tough, levelling, boss battling RPG and like Sekiro it has a complex and hard to master fighting system. But where Sekiro is all about timing and deflections, Neo is about stamina management, strategy and deep character customization. Different weapons unlock different movesets, stats and abilities are affected not just by levelling but by armour and gear, and success depends on getting to grips with the key pulse and stance systems. Don't worry, once you've found your weapon of choice and worked out a build that suits you, it all becomes second nature, leaving you to enjoy the fusion of Ninja Gaiden grade combat with hardcore action RPG progression. Next up we have Uncharted 4 A Thief's End because, I mean, obviously. If PS3's Uncharted trilogy is a perfect matinee triple bill, action, laughs, romance, Nathan Drake's PS4 send-off takes things to an entirely different level. The ambitious set pieces are still here, the mud-sliding, rope-swinging impossible delivered miraculously into our hands. Globe-spanning environments boast an improbable, simultaneous mix of outrageous scale and minute detail, game-stopping vistas contrasted with authentically modelled rock slides. And above all, there's a weight and seriousness to the story that adds poignancy to the established mix of adventure and laughs. The result is the final chapter that Nathan Drake deserves, a development rather than another run-out, and a chance for us to enjoy him one last time in his most spectacular setting yet. Way to go, Sully. Still got it. Control is a rare gem, a true original which combines gameplay experimentation with stylish visuals and a compelling cult story. Enjoy the X-Files and Twin Peaks vibes of the game's setting, a secretive government agency dealing in the paranormal, based in the oldest house, a brutalist skyscraper semi-hidden and semi-alive in the middle of New York. Jesse Faden arrives to investigate her own past, but is quickly, alarmingly promoted to director, with the agency under attack from a force called The Hiss. It's weird, new weird to be precise, and backed up by fantastic, physics-affronting gameplay, with Jesse's growing set of powers seeing her levitate, mind control and telekinetically throw her way through environments and enemies alike. 
Control is wonderfully, uniquely itself. The kind of tantalising, half-understood world of secrets you can totally lose yourself in and an absolute one-off. Welcome back, Director. And speaking of one-offs, Jedi Fallen Order is our kind of Star Wars game. One that makes full use of the established universe and combines it with new planets, characters and Star Warsy ideas that give us more to love. Our hero is Cal Kestis, a one-time Padawan who's learned to hide among the ruins of the Fallen Republic and is now forced into action as the Empire comes hunting for Force users. Cal's force powers and fighting skills unfold into an accessible but deep combat system, while there's a Dark Souls touch to his progression and exploration of various star systems, along with a suitably unlikely crew. But Fallen Order truly stands out when delivering moments that capture the elusive essence of Star Wars magic. A scrapper's yard filled with relics from the Clone Wars, weed-covered walkers in the swamps of Kashyyyk, or the chilled reverence of an ancient temple. Yeah, I'm okay. You all right? No, we are not doing that again. And that's it for our list of the top 10 action games on PS4. We're sure you've got your own suggestions. Let us know what they are in the comments, give this video a like, and subscribe to the channel to keep up with everything from the world of PlayStation. For the players.